Welcome to Best Way to Smoke Weekly News. This is Serpo Jr. Big J. And stepping right on into it. We got two black girls were charged with hate crimes after allegedly hitting a woman on a bus and making anti-white statements, the police say. Right. I think um what I think what what really happened was they they fucked up. But it's like you have two black girls right here and it's like you don't know what the situations may be. And if they hit the woman, they now starting to say anti whatever it may be. Now they're being charged, but you have like other parties doing anti black things and then it's like nothing happens. Right. Well, I believe I mean, it goes both ways, man, because you see, you know, in the news too, also people get like white people that that use slurs and you know they don't got arrested on camera and stuff like that. So it's there and it happens, you know what I mean, on both sides probably. Yeah. And then it's probably like, you know, a catch. They like shit. It happens on this side, it's going to happen on this side. You know, it it, it got to be fair even though it ain't fair. You know, yeah. but I think those, you know, those girls probably should calm their ass down a little bit though. They probably was doing a little bit too much, you know, hyped up. Sometimes, you know, you do have a little bit too much anger or hate up in you, man, and, and that shit just spew out. So mm -hmm. I think, I, my, my personal opinion, man, I think they was just doing a little bit too much. They probably should have calmed down. The lady didn't put her hands on them. They apparently hit her with something or threw something at her head. You know what I mean? So they, they went a little bit too far, you know? Regardless of the circumstances, once we come in with this anti-white, anti-black thing, we need to get rid of that anti-period. Because once you put the anti in there, it's like it's a negative connotation to it. Period, and all it can be is just a confrontation. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right about that, though. But look, hey, everybody, man, don't be racist. Don't be on no bullshit, and just move on. No. So look, we moving on to Brittany um, Griner. She um, pleaded guilty. So a deal that they that they got on the table right now is for her to be uh, switched up with somebody that's arrested out here from Russia. Prison swap. Yeah, a prison swap, you know, and send send her out here and send him back out there. Yeah, and other things that's on the table with Brittany Griner, she's saying what her, her defense team is also saying that once everything very first happened in the beginning in Moscow, that she was wrongly informed about the documents that she was signing. And then afterwards, it was like switched and distorted, which got her in like in some of the situations as well. And on top of that, it's like it's medical purposes. So her team is putting it out there as if like these are medical for medical reasons to treat injuries, this, that, and the other. So that's what's going up right there with Brittany. I don't think that's going to work, though, because at the same time, it might be medical, but it's not legal out there. Yeah. So it's no way around it, whether it's medical or not. They don't have no medical, you know, from my understanding, no medical kind of situation. So it don't matter. You know, it, it don't matter. The only thing they looking to do is do that swap. If they could do that swap, she can come home. Man, she must be worth something if they willing to do a prisoner swap from country to country. For sure. Moving on, we got the rapper Jada Youngin. He passes away at a very young age of 24. We brought this to my attention because it's like he's a young brother. He was doing his music, and it seemed as if, like, he was, in my eyes, like, accepted amongst a lot of different neighborhoods and for him to be so young and for him to like spread this little word or whatever type energy that he had it was great he came through my neighborhood one time and it's like man everybody showed him love everybody within that generation showed him love so it's like this one kind of hit like the generation below us right and we're bringing this to y'all attention right now to just like like pushing prayers for the family and just like keep the movement going as far as like the youngins giving out positive energies, whether you rap about whatever it may be to make your little bread, don't make that out to actually be your life because we're not sure what the circumstances may be. We all want to like live a great prosperous life. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, rest in peace to the young dude, man. And you know, with, with music, it's, you know, it's a way to deliver it, to tell a story and make a person understand and shit like that, though. So mm -hmm. at the same time, it's a lot of young youngsters, you know, dropping off, getting killed and stuff. Man, it's, it's been happening a lot. A lot of the young rappers and stuff. It's like some, somebody said being a rapper is a dangerous job, you know, because a lot of people was um, getting killed. And it's the lifestyle that they out there portraying, mm -hmm. and, you know, and putting out there. So, you know, it's a way to do things and it's a way to... um 
to make it happen, man. But you know, it's a, it's a sad story, man. He yeah. got killed in his hometown. You know, uh, um, like a drive-by type situation. Uh, uh, man, cold situation. Man, man you race the envy. Like you're saying, rapping is like a dangerous job. That's only because you make it a dangerous job. You uh -huh. know, rap about just rap or whatever it may be. You don't have to take shots at somebody else just because the masses like messiness. Uh -huh. You know, so... Like we have a lot of rappers that's here and 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 like really survive like turmoil, whatever you want to call it. Yep. So it's like it's really how you deliver your message. If you hurt somebody, whether it be word or whatever it may be, the tongue is very slick. You sure. know, so just like don't put the extras on it. Live life, make your bread, feed your family, generational wealth. Yeah, and even with that being said, too, it's like sometimes when you in your hometown, you you got to move out that motherfucker. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's like that. You kind of kind of move a little different, even though, you know, you might feel like, man, I ain't going nowhere. This is where I'm from. You know, sometimes you got to make that executive decision and move on. And that just, comes you know, with, yeah, slide up out true, of there. Yeah, Big J, but every, you, for you to do that, you got to be willing to accept change yep. and accept growth. That's for sure. Yep. So we moving on. What's up with Biden, cuz oh? Biden says he's working on a bill to release uh inmates that's that been charged with cannabis. And this is brought to your attention because it's like we all know during Biden campaign, he he brought this to our attention as far as like it was big. It yeah, was a big thing. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. bring it, uh, we're gonna get them out, we're gonna decriminalize this, that, and the other. And it's like it he recently just come out from a trip from what Israel, the Middle East or whatever it may be. Yep. And it's like he came out and he verbally said what we all in the cannabis community say. Nobody should be locked up yep. for medical, for, for not medical, for marijuana use. Yep. So take out the medical, scratch that. Nobody should be in prison for marijuana, marijuana use. Period. So that's kind of good. And it's like he was asked a question. What are you going to do? about your campaign plan as far as releasing inmates. Right. His his answer is like, man, as I just stated, nobody should be locked up for marijuana use. Yep. And that bill is in play right now. Yeah. So See, I, I and then a lot of the times when they talk about when they talk about them when it comes to cannabis, they talk about it a lot of the things that he said before in the past, talking mm -hmm. about it's a gateway drug, it leads to this and it leads to that. Mm -hmm. And so you know, I just hope he stick to his word because that was big, a big part of his campaign. And, you know, we talk about it all the time. Get this shit right. Mm -hmm. Get this shit right. Pass the bill. Come on, Biden. And real fast. Make it we, happen, man. And real fast. We all know what Biden stood for back then. Yep. So if him for him to come out to be, I guess, America's commander in chief and for him to sit here and say he retract his thoughts and his words, nobody should be locked up for marijuana use. Yep. If he can be informed and change his views, so can you. Yep. And like you said, he not going to veto nothing. Any bill for marijuana that comes to the table, it just got to be voted on. So, look, make it make it happen. Yes. And on again, we have a 13-year-old young black woman, I am going to emphasize, who just recently graduated high school and is being accepted into medical school. That's dope. And again, she's 13 years of age. And this has brought you to your attention, our youth. Yep. Our youth is our future. And this is like proof of it right here. And it's like if we guide our children, whether they ours or not, it take a village. You encourage that. You push for that because the youth are our future. Man, that's what it is. And on, on top of... Her um, getting accepted into uh, medical school, she also started a founded a program called Brown STEM Girl. You know what I'm saying? It's an organization for colored girls, you know, who are interested in getting into the medical field and stuff like that. So, man, this this young lady is definitely dope, and we um, we definitely um, like this um, story. Yes, yeah, I appreciate I appreciate the 13 year old for having that ambition, and I appreciate the young lady's parents. For actually giving that 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 hope to for our sure. youth. Yep, this is best way to smoke news. Tune in every week.